Welcome back everyone to theCUBE special coverage here in New York City at our new East Coast studio location for theCUBE here on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange in, in partnering with the NYSE Wired community. The Cube is bringing all the action from Silicon Valley to New York, deep dives, podcast style, really kind of bringing you all the action. Don Muir's here, the founder of ARC, bringing some innovative solutions uh, to the market. Don, great to see you. Great to be here, thanks for having me. So we were talking before we, we went on camera about the, the, the journey, let's get back on the table. What motivated you to start ARC? What is it? What's the company do? When did you start it? What was the origination story? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, so by way of personal background, uh, I grew up in the finance world. Uh, right around here, I was working in late stage private equity in New York uh, before ultimately taking the leap into entrepreneurship. And so. Why that's relevant, I experienced the inefficiencies of the traditional model firsthand every day. Um, when I went out to Stanford Business School, uh, the, the, I had this epiphany where I saw these hyper growth early stage venture backed predominantly technology companies being underserved by the same financial ecosystem partners that you know, I worked alongside in my prior life. So I had this aha moment where I could take uh, the best of uh, financial services on the East Coast and apply that to Silicon Valley and deliver that at a lower cost through software. And that was really the inception of ARC. So I teamed up with a couple of classmates, I found yeah. investors in Palo Alto, and we're off to the races. So yeah, it's a classic entrepreneurial for formula. It's almost so simple, it sounds so still almost stupid <laughs> for saying it, but you build a better product than the competition at a lower cost, that's simple. Business. That sounds like what you saw here, underserved market and the product service wasn't as good. What specifically was the target service um, and what was the, the key? The companies and the founders that we were serving, um, they were too small, too early in their, in their life cycle to actually get the attention of, of the big banks. The big banks had a mass market cookie cutter product that's built for their larger clients yeah. with hundreds of millions of assets. Yeah. Uh, what we saw is the ability to take that financial stability but deliver that through an intuitive and customized software experience to under-resourced tech founders yeah. and the CFO suite in a way that yeah. they can put their banking and capital markets experience on autopilot. Yeah. So it sounds like the big guys didn't want to chase the little deals and they wanted the big bank deals, big checks, big commissions from the big whales. They didn't want the minnows, so to speak. What did you guys do? Is it a platform? Is it a two-sided marketplace? What's the product? How, do you, how did you optimize um, the service? Yeah, definitely. And so the, the real differentiation from the traditional model is that ARC is not a bank. We offer the two core product pillars of a traditional bank that serves businesses, and that's a cash management and capital. Uh, however, we do it completely asset light, and we deliver it through software and artificial intelligence. And so on the banking side, uh, we partner with the world's largest and most reputable financial institutions that have trillions of assets and are global systemically important financial institutions. Yes. Uh, we, we integrate those products into one user interface, mm -hmm. allowing our customers to diversify cash across bank partners to maximize yeah. yield and FDIC coverage. On the capital market side, yeah. in a very similar manner, we've spun up a B2B debt marketplace with hundreds of bank and non-bank yeah. private credit investors. We've onboarded them we've mapped their credit box and allow them uh, to uh, drive more efficient deal making with our banking clients on the cash management yeah. side. So together, yeah. we've recreated the banking model, <laughs> yeah. but with software and completely asset -like. That's really clever. And what you're doing is you're creating the same level of service to someone who would never get over the threshold or the pain required to go beg for access. And that's a very key nuance. So there are other fintech brands in the market. Our differentiation on the fintech side is that we're serving a larger, more mature uh, uh, type of, of, of company. We're working with venture-backed companies. Many of them have raised tens to hundreds of millions of dollars of capital. Their finance team is very lean and they want a banking experience that moves at the same pace yeah. that they do, yeah. but they still want a white glove uh, a yeah. high NPS customer experience. So every yeah. account at ARC is a dedicated relationship manager. They're interfacing with the ARC application, and we ensure that yeah. if the product isn't serving their needs, they want a higher touch experience, they have someone on the other side of the phone that yeah. they can call at any time. Yeah, we saw, we saw a lot of the things come out. AngelList had a cool product. Carta has this cap table management. I mean, that was the beginning of these services that would come in to serve the companies. And, and that became, that's going to become the scale point. I mean, the human capital and AI is only going to help that. Uh, um, before getting into some of the things that you see with AI to serve the client, your customers, is what's the threshold to get in? You said venture back. So does someone have to have certain round size? Where, where do you 
create the, the line if you if I want to ride the roller coaster, how tall do I need to be? Definitely. You know? so, so we work with what we call venture track companies. So companies are going to go on to raise substantial amounts of capital, build teams, generate north of 10, typically 50 million of, of revenue within the next three years of onboard and arc. We'll start very early. Yeah. In fact, we're winning a substantial share of you know, Y Combinator, these founders, our product really resonates with these founders will join before they raise their seed round, and then they'll work with us through Series A, Series B. So you B will take pre-venture backed companies that are on track to get VC. Um, how about self-funded companies that don't have VC that are at say 10 plus million in revenue and that are going to maybe get funding with AI. We're seeing a lot of, I say, lifestyle businesses that are going to get funded because of Gen AI, because they're in market. Is that something that you'd look at those kinds of companies too? Yeah, there are many of our favorite uh, our clients at ARC and our most loyal clients at ARC, these bootstrap SaaS founders who are sensitive to uh, dilution. They yeah. don't necessarily want to raise more equity. Many of them raised a seed round and yeah. then decided, hey, there's lower cost capital out there yeah. and we can tap into the capital yeah. markets in a way that hasn't been done before and access multi-million dollar term loans allowing them to put the pedal to the floor without incurring unnecessary. So you're not just a debt, debt because Paul Graham for the post, I've been saying vocally that debt, if you're not careful, debt could kill a startup because you want to have debt as a certain managed asset, but you're bringing more than just say debt. Do you have that on the marketplace? You're bringing cash management infrastructure. That's, that's is the, that right? That's the beauty of the product. And I completely agree. Debt is not for everyone. Yeah. However, it is a extraordinarily valuable tool for high performing companies that can take on yeah. and serve. That can really manage debt. it well. It's and not a freebie. That's exactly <laughs> it's right. It's not like, hey, I got a $20 million A round. Let's just get some venture debt. Whoa, hold on. That, that might be a little bit dangerous if you don't get product market fit. That's exactly right. That's and, a time bomb waiting to happen. And what happened following the regional bank crisis is many of these companies, even the most efficient, yeah. highest quality, you know, oftentimes bootstrap cash flowing companies, they didn't know where to go yeah. for debt. But the reality is dozens of new private yeah. credit investors poured into the tech ecosystem looking yeah. to work with these businesses. What we've done is we've aggregated all of that supply side and made it available on demand to companies who are yeah. eligible for it. Are you in New York? Where's your headquarters? So we're split 50-50 between our two headquarters in San Francisco and New York. Great, so the Silicon Valley Cube teams could work together on content at our Palo Alto studio. That's our, I think New York's a hot area right now. I got to say, I, what I love about New York right now is, is that it's got the Silicon Valley vibe in the sense that, and here's how I can tell. When I'm walking down the street, obviously New York's huge. People are talking tech. Yeah. Go back five years ago, it wasn't that tech savvy. I hear people talking about provisioning microservices yesterday on Bowery Street. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell? I mean, that's, you know, when you got the tech infiltration, tech's now lifestyle, so I think we're at a t crossover point now where people are realizing that technology isn't an IT thing. Right. Or it isn't like some consumer rocket ship company that now AI is going to infuse this into all of our operations. And so if you don't bring software and say uh, digital technologies into the, into the departments, like what you're doing, I mean, you're basically bringing a financial system in that would be for a mature company. When I, that's exactly right. When I first moved to New York uh, to start my first role in, in finance over a decade ago, uh, I didn't have any sense of the West Coast culture, Silicon Valley, entrepreneurship. Yeah. Um, that was all foreign to me. I was working for a value-oriented private equity yeah. fund. We would buy cash flow and, and pay as little as possible for that cash yeah. flow. <laughs> um, it was a great experience understanding, a very valuable experience understanding the pain points of the traditional model, but it wasn't until I moved uh, to Silicon Valley that I, I saw this market opportunity to apply the best aspects of the traditional model yeah. in an intuitive uh, and innovative way to this new IC, to this new customer segment. And when I moved back to New York, you're right, it seems like the tech ecosystem yeah. has really flourished here. We've been doubling down, building out that startup it's, community. It's not like, oh, you're in tech. And, you know, hey, what do you do? I'm in tech. Oh, and then people don't know what to say. Now they do, they get, they get the tech scene. Um, what's next for you guys? As you look at your venture, love the, biz, the business model. I love marketplaces. And I think everyone knows I'm a fan of marketplace. Amazon's marketplace is blowing it out. Google's marketplace is blowing it out. So when you have products and services that can be consumed easily, that actually help companies scale and be more efficient. It's a winning formula, so congratulations. Thank you. What's your business plan now? What's next? 
Uh, what's the progression? Another round of funding. You guys making money? You selling? How many customers do you have? Can you share some of you know, not the good customers, but like give us where you are in, in terms of the the, the, the traction. The, the company across both the cash management and capital market side have been growing very nicely over yep. the last couple of years. Our last funding round uh, was in 2022. We launched the capital markets product uh, in January of this year, and we've been heads down building something really exciting that I'm eager to bring to market in the coming months. Um, it pertains to this uh, AI discussion that we were having before <laughs> uh, before this started, uh, but what I will leave you So you're going to have a new product launch? We have, we have an adjacent product launch in the, on the capital markets business that we're really excited to share with the world and is actively in the ground with uh, a number of customers today where they're getting real value from the application. We've when, can you expect, when can we expect that announcement? In the coming months, we're fine tuning <laughs> the technology. All right. We're in, we're in deep you know, private beta with a number of folks and uh, we'll be bringing it to market. Uh, as soon as uh, as soon as the product is is ready for uh, right. general availability. So a little teaser there. Um, what is your vision on AI? Because obviously, you know, like I said, one of the patterns we're seeing in this modern era, certainly in the professional services side of the business, where it used to be labor intensive, you're seeing a dual model flywheel developing, where you have great professional service and then a dual platform play for operating leverage. Um, this seems to be quite the pattern, and folks that are in market in these professional services tend to not be venture backed, but profitable businesses or fund, maybe they get some capital, capital strategy along the lines you're thinking about, more diverse, not so traditional, categorically VC. But as they add AI, they get platform like capabilities or data that's valuable or work with a managed service to give them a platform leverage. This is new. We're starting to see this was only, uh, uh, only for the 1% of the companies out there could do professional service with platform. Now, democratization of platform AI is coming. What's your vision? Because you're, you're one of those companies that's enabling this professional service power dynamic of, in a good way for you know, lower cost with operating leverage. So scales I, on the human side, not to scale bodies to technology, I can scale one here and go 10X platform, that's, that's step function. That's exactly right. I have a lot of thoughts on the topic. Um, a, couple, a couple that really resonate from what you said. First of all, I don't believe there's an industry that is more ripe for disruption or technological innovation than financial services through the advent of generative AI. And that market opportunity, that white space opportunity is enormous. Um, and we really haven't even you know, cracked the surface of the potential of the AI applications in financial services in no specific sub vertical is that more true than banking uh, and capital markets. And so I, I, won't, I won't go you know, too, too far in the weeds, but what I will yeah. say is I, Feel free. I lived this firsthand. When I was a private equity associate and, and senior associate here in New York, I've done these menial uh, redundant tasks firsthand. I've worked with armies of investment bankers and commercial bankers um, and management consultants to run yeah. commercial due yeah. diligence and then financial diligence on investment opportunities. And I know, uh, I know where, uh, where there's opportunity to automate core yeah. repeatable tasks with AI in a way that's never been yeah. done before. You know, I think, I, Don, I think you're on to this generational shift. I remember when the web hit the scene, um, I remember the magic formula was make it easy to use, reduce the steps it takes to do something and make it intuitive. That was the secret to the web. What you're getting at there is you see repetitive tasks that they're doing over and over again because it's a different client or whatever opportunity, they're doing the same thing over again, which is in definition of insanity, right? Right. So you're bringing AI to that automation, but then the human capital piece is the key process. So again, another pattern we're seeing, I want to get your reaction to is um, people who just adopt a tech stack or software approach, that's, not, that's an IT answer. The process answer has to be matched. This is a front end, back end innovation cycle where in the history of my lifetime, I've never seen before. Usually the front end or back end, cloud was back end, mobile was front end, web was front end. Now it's front end experiences and back end. I'm so, so if you, you I'm don't do process and tech, it fails. I'm so glad you made this point. It is core to ARC's value prop in the market. I believe in marrying white glove customer service, so human in the loop, yeah. with bleeding edge technology. I don't believe there needs to be an artificial trade-off. That exists today in the market. You either get a software platform that is fully self-serve, figure it out, uh, or a traditional bank, which really has limited technology. What ARC is doing is, is marrying the two, the best of the traditional banks, which is the high touch, 
high NPS experience with yeah. financial stability and big yeah. bank partners, married with AI, financial API integrations, and a really intuitive front-end software experience. Well, Don, congratulations. We're excited to collaborate with you and follow your mission. Give a plug for what you're working on, share with the audience, what you're looking at, so you got a, some good business growth opportunities in front of you, you get the AI wave you're riding on perfectly. What are you looking for? You're hiring in places in Silicon Valley, New York, give the plug. Definitely, so if you are a tech founder or CFO, there's no better place uh, to work than ARC on the cash management side or with Capital Markets. Within one place, you can tap into the private credit markets in a couple of clicks access hundreds of lenders to see what type of non-dilutive growth capital solution you're qualified for. On the commercial banking side, you can maximize yield, FDIC coverage, all in one application and one intuitive experience. And then in terms of our hiring, we're looking for AI engineers, we're looking for product, and we're looking for capital market experts who can come in and serve yeah. our mission yeah. to help innovate and improve the legacy model. All right. Oh, thanks so much. Great opportunity to join a growing team, but really highlights that this opportunity for every company to capture growth with AI, you got financing available, you got new platforms. Again, this is just more goodness, uh, great personalization, human in the loop, AI is a generator of value, it's a disruptive enabler. And of course, we're bringing all the action here, disrupting technology, coverage, theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching. Thanks very much, thanks for having me.